Tuzi and David Ono. Nice, thank you. Winter is just days away, but you won't have to wait that long for stormy weather. Next up at 6 o'clock, snow and rain already pounding Northern California. And we're up next. Dallas Rains has the live Doppler 7000 forecast. And tragedy hits a Southland community. A teenage girl hit on her way to school. Plus, can scorpions help cure cancer? A stinging discovery from a Southland hospital next to Night News at 6. When you see news happening, call the Eyewitness News tip line toll-free at 877-777-NEWS. This is Eyewitness News. Now, Michelle Tuzzi, Mark Brown, Dallas Raines, and Rob Fukazaki with the Southland's number one news at 6. A major Pacific storm is headed our way. It's already dumping plenty of rain to the north, and when it gets here, it'll stick around for days. Good evening, I'm David Ono, and for Mark Brown. I'm Michelle Tuzzi. Here's the latest at 6. We need the rain, and we are going to get it. There is no green signifying rain on the live Doppler 7000 radar yet, but the key word is yet because the storm is on its way south. In fact, there are two storms. One is already dropping plenty of snow in the Blue Canyon area of the Sierra Nevada, and that has crews here in Southern California getting ready for what's coming our way. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Alvarez is live in Glendora with the latest. Steve. Good evening, Michelle. We're at uh, County Fire Station number 86, as you said, in Glendora, just one of a number of foothill communities where people pay attention to any rain coming this way because of the potential of mudslides. In fact, you can see over my shoulder, right here in front of the fire station, as they are at every county fire station, sandbags for anyone who wants to pick them up. Even though right now, for example, it's a gorgeous night, the fire officials know it really is the calm before the storm. In fact, in some cases, that storm is already here. The rain started falling this morning in San Francisco. Wet streets and more than the usual number of traffic accidents. And that Pacific front is headed our way. The Los Angeles County Fire Department is already making plans. Absolutely. Um, after the fires occurred over our shoulder, my shoulder here uh, in September, ever since the end of the fire, we've been thinking about the rain coming. Those fires swept through the nearby mountains, leaving the ground dangerously bare all along the foothill communities that border the Angeles National Forest. Rain and dirt are a dangerous mix. We're going to have to. We're going to have to. All right, we've got to get out of here. Mudslides are a major concern. They can roll down these steep hills, destroying homes and property and blocking off roads at a moment's notice. The fire department warns homeowners not to wait until it's too late. I'm trying to get the word out to homeowners to pick up sandbags at the local fire stations. Uh, all LA County fire stations have sandbags available for them. Damaged homes and property can be replaced. The fire department's biggest concern is loss of life. And that usually happens when people get too close to moving waterways, streams, and flood control channels. You do not want people to get anywhere near uh, moving water, because uh, it doesn't take very much to knock somebody off their feet and, and drag them downstream. And if you want any more information on storm safety guidelines, you go to our website, abc7.com. We've got the list of uh, the fire department's storm safety guidelines, because as the captain told me, it's never too early to prepare and also to know what to do in case of a storm emergency. Because as we said, it's nice now, but it's coming. Live in Glendale, Steve Alvarez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. David? Yeah, it's never easy. Thank you, Steve. And if you like wet weather, get ready for a stormy week. Dallas Rains is tracking the storm on our live Doppler 7000. Thank you, David, and good evening, everyone. This is a situation we're going to have to monitor very carefully, beginning more than likely about during the day on Monday and into about Tuesday and early part of Wednesday of next week because the jet stream is very powerful. You can see it on our latest satellite views. There is a lot of moisture here. It's been pounding the central and northern coast of California today, and this jet stream is expected to shift a little further southward, and when we get in the core of the jet stream, that's when the weather can get pretty rough. We'll tell you all about it coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Dallas, thank you. We'll see you then. In the meantime, with so much rain on the way, state officials are worried about runoff, which flushes bacteria into the ocean, and they're now trying to stop it before it gets there. Bacteria in the ocean caused by sewage and other harmful substances can cause a number of illnesses. Under the new regulations, local officials must reduce the number of days the bacteria can exceed human health standards in waters near shore. Many officials criticize the plan. They say it'll cost millions and that it's cheaper to keep swimmers out of the water for a few days. An intense search is underway for a missing security guard who was kidnapped from his company's truck lot. 
And now the victim's family is pleading for his safe return. Eyewitness News reporter Brian Jenkins is live in commerce with the latest. Brian? Well, 52-year-old Song Chia would normally be at his guard shack in front of the uh, overnight transportation company here working the night shift. Instead, law enforcement's asking for the public's help because at this point, no one knows where he is. They work alone and unarmed, checking the manifest of every truck that leaves the yard as the lone defense against theft at the overnight transportation company. Such was a scenario for 52-year-old Song Chia, working guard duty around 4 a.m. yesterday, when two men drove up in a van and confronted him as a third man driving a big rig tractor pulled in and tried to drive off with a trailer. He's uh, seen by witnesses, so he flees the location. The witnesses at the same time see that the victim, Jay, is struggling with the other two suspects at the gate. They pull him into the van and drive away, and he hasn't been seen since. Do you think that he may have confronted these guys, and maybe that's why they... That's what we think. If he see anything that's wrong, he would stand up for it. He would go and argue with that person. That from one of Chia's three daughters and his wife. Chia has not been heard from since his abduction. Witnesses describe the suspect in the truck as a black male in his 30s, roughly 5 feet 10 inches, 170 pounds, short black hair with a lazy right eye. Not much is known about the other two suspects, except that they were driving a brown two-tone passenger van with horizontal tan stripes. We want to beg them to please bring him home safely. Just let him go. Don't do any harm to him. And of course, anyone with any information about Mr. Chia's whereabouts is urged to call detectives at the L.A. County Sheriff's Office. Live in the City of Commerce, Brian Jenkins, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Back to you, David. Thank you, Brian. A horrific scene in El Monte this morning as a teenage girl is killed while walking to school. Officials say it appears to have been an accident, but that's little consolation for family and friends of the girl. Eyewitness News reporter Sid Garcia is live with more. Sid. David, it's just before 8 o'clock this morning when 13-year-old Ann Tran was on her way to school. She was hit and killed in the crosswalk you see behind me, a few feet away from where she was hit candles and flowers and there's some folks there who are just remembering the eighth grader that was hit here earlier today the driver of that gravel truck was taken to a nearby hospital to be for checked for drugs and alcohol police say that probably wasn't a factor but they're calling what happened here this morning a very tragic accident late this afternoon the eighth graders family came to the accident site to pray and to console one another they say 13 year old ann tran was in a rush to get to school this morning when she was run over by a gravel truck. The Durfee Middle School eighth grader was on her way to choir practice. She was really interested in music. That's why she go early today, just going to class and practice for ready to Christmas for singing, you know. She's quiet. Very she's nice. really nice. Very nice. She's uh, actually she calls today. She says we're going to spend the night. Yeah. She's going to want to spend the weekend over the house. Over the house. Uh -huh. now. And now it's like it just. I'm suing Cha. According to El Monte Police, the driver of the gravel truck did what he was supposed to. He stopped at the crosswalk and checked to see if anyone was around. At that point, they saw the pedestrian exactly in front of this truck and it struck the pedestrian, causing the pedestrian to fall onto the ground. And the truck continued forward where the driver apparently felt a thud and stopped the truck, stepped out of the truck and looked under his truck and had realized that he ran over a pedestrian. Counselors were on campus to help and trans friends and classmates deal with her death. Some of the girls were crying because they were her friends. We had after school class and I had just helped her. And yesterday we had a, a we had to sing for the school district and she was laughing and everything. She had fun yesterday. There were a number of parents who told me they've been asking the school district to put a crossing guard here because of all the traffic. I am told that first thing Monday morning, there will be a crossing guard here. I'm also told that the district is working a plan out with the construction company to stop work in the morning when the kids come to school and to stop work in the afternoon when the kids are dismissed. Reporting live from El Monte, Sid Garcia. ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Michelle, back to you. Mm, Sid, thank you. President Bush today, as expected, unveiled his smallpox vaccine plan to protect certain Americans from a potential bioterrorist attack. The president says he will get the vaccine along with some half million members of the military in high-risk areas, but he stopped short of recommending it for everyone. Given the current level of threat and the inherent health risks of the vaccine, we have decided not to initiate a broader vaccination program for all Americans at this time.
The vaccine will also be offered to health care workers who could come in contact with victims of a bioterrorist attack. Apologetic yet defiant, Mississippi Senator Trent Lott asked for forgiveness today, denying claims he's a racist. Speaking before a hometown crowd in Mississippi, Lott said he was, quote, winging it when he spoke of supporting the one-time pro-segregation platform of Strom Thurmond. I apologize for opening old wounds and hurting many Americans who feel so deeply uh, in this area. I take full responsibility for my remarks. You know, I'm not about to resign for an accusation that uh, I, I'm something I'm not. Lott is in line to become Senate Majority Leader in January. It's a day of relief and sadness in the Boston Archdiocese. Colonel Bernard Law has resigned for, after a storm of protest over the widening sex abuse scandal. Law gave his resignation to Pope John Paul II at the Vatican today. The Cardinal offered a written apology begging forgiveness from those who have suffered from his mistakes. Bishop Richard Lennon will take Law's place until a successor is named. The church is still facing a flood of civil suits and a grand jury investigation. They're poisonous and frightening, but they could save lives. We'll tell you how scorpions may soon be recruited to fight cancer. Plus, we're tracking the storm that's moving toward the Southland tonight. Dallas Rains will be back with a live Doppler 7000 forecast. And the sky's the limit for these daredevils as they try to set a new world record. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Fukuzaki, a setback for Tiger Woods. Will UCLA soon live the life of Riley? And have the Lakers lost that loving feeling? A live report coming up from Staples later in sports. Deck the halls with Hollywood's hottest stars. It's George Pinocchio's holiday movie wrap. He's serving up a helping of Halle's holiday memories. That's never, ever happened. And dishing the dirt with so Denzel. Much. It was the best thing in the world to me. The biggest blockbuster. So much I love working on this movie. The brightest star. We worked so fast on this film. George plays Santa to the stars. Hey, what'd you do this year? <laughs> Plus, their childhood Christmas secrets revealed. It's George Pinocchio's holiday movie wrap. Saturday at 6.30 here on ABC7. The LA or the delivery and no payments till May 2004. This weekend at Levitt's. The city of LA is using a new weapon to crack down on prostitution. Today, the council approved an ordinance allowing officers to impound vehicles used by people trying to pick up prostitutes. It's modeled after measures already in place in Oakland and Stockton. The LA ordinance would allow police to impound cars without a conviction. They'll concentrate in areas like Hollywood, where there's been an increase in the number of sex crimes. A creature with a deadly sting is now being credited with saving lives. Most people run from scorpions, but now doctors at City of Hope are embracing their anti-cancer properties. Health specialist Denise DeDore is here with the story. Denise? Michelle, imagine beating one of the most deadliest forms of brain cancer with a single dose of scorpion venom. It's a life-saving sting one young man needed. Doctors told him he only had a year to live. At 23, doctors told Long Beach State student Dwayne Ruolo he wouldn't live to see this Christmas. He was diagnosed with an aggressive form of brain cancer called glioma. The overwhelming majority of patients that have these tumors will uh, die from them in a reasonably short time period. Just at that point, I was so hopeless that I was going to give anything a try because I didn't want to die too, too young. This giant yellow Israeli scorpion is a reason Dwayne's alive today. This creature's venom contains small molecules that move through the brain without harming healthy tissue. The venom carries anti-cancer agents that only attack cancer cells. Test patients like Dwayne are surviving. So that's encouraging, particularly given the type of disease that we're dealing with. The five-minute procedure does not have any reported toxic side effects. Even with surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, 14,000 glioma patients die each year. This scorpion venom will give many people the hope they didn't have before. It certainly makes you feel that nothing is here by accident and that the goal of science is to discover the wonders of the world around us and the universe. I think the future really is unlimited. I think I'll just be here for a while. Hopefully a long while.
He's lived 12 months longer than Dr. said he would, and like Dwayne said, he's planning on being here a long time. The Scorpion Venom trial continues at the City of Hope Medical Center, and they're looking for brain cancer patients interested in participating. Denise Dador, ABC7 Eyewitness News, David and Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Denise. Enjoy the dry weather while you can. It's not going to last long. Here's a live look from our Irvine Spectrum camera on this Friday night. Dallas Rain says we're in for a big change in the weather. And the next time you stare into an ATM, you might get a response back. Meet the teller machines that can read your mind. Hello, everyone. I'm Sean Nelson. I want to wish everyone back there in Long Beach, California, my beautiful wife, Melissa, my mom, wish y'all a happy holidays. I'm not here in Kuwait. I uh, really miss y'all, and I hope to come home soon. Hey, Southern California, take this Jeopardy challenge. 70s music. That's Mick Jagger singing back up on her hit, You're So Vain. Think you know the right question? Find out on the next Jeopardy. Watch Jeopardy at 7 here on ABC7. Come join the fun, then get ready for some great rewards with the new Wheel Watchers Club. Amazing discounts on cool Sony gear is just a click away. Sign up today at wheeloffortune.com. Fiesta Week, all this week on Wheel. Go ahead. A huge. How do I look? <laughs> get everything you need, get it done, and wrap it up. That's fun. <laughs> A huge eucalyptus tree toppled over today near the intersection of Beverly and Coldwater Canyon in Beverly Hills. Those trees are known for their wide but shallow root systems. Luckily, it happened just a few yards from a fire station because buried underneath the tree is a car. Oh the driver wasn't hurt, but she will undoubtedly remember this Friday the 13th for a long time Ooh, to come. Boy, hopefully we won't see a lot of that uh, no. coming this weekend yeah. because there is a storm heading our way. We're looking for some rain, uh, a little bit of rain late Saturday night and into Sunday morning, but uh, more significant rain. Uh, for instance, expected on Monday night and into Tuesday, and that weather system may tap in on some of the El Nino and bring us some uh, significant rain. So we're going to be watching that for you live up to 7,000 right now at 6 o'clock, showing no precipitation in Southern California at this hour. Skies are clear to partly cloudy. We've had some high clouds today, 61 degrees, wind out of the west at 3. Afternoon high, quite delightful, a little bit cooler, 68, 47 this morning's low temperature. Take a look at the satellite view. We'll show you what's going on. Most of Central California getting pounded from this weather system now, and you can see the jet stream. There's plenty of moisture left offshore there. This is the time-lapse loop. We want to show you some interesting clouds coming by, some high-level clouds, but Notice how these kind of stay in the same position. These are wave clouds that develop along the topography of Southern California as the air is lifted. They just kind of stay right in that area. Satellite view will take us northbound, and it is a shield of rain. Been coming down over the northern part of the state today. Again, that's where the jet stream is. It's going to stay there for tonight and most of the day tomorrow as the jet stream is still going to take it a while before it moves down into Southern California, but it will happen. As a matter of fact, if we look at the computer animation for the next 24 hours, here's what happens. We have the high drifting off that's been giving us the good weather. The front moves into Southern California late Saturday night, but it just kind of brushes us, leaving snow in the Sierra and rain to the north of us. But the jet stream is expected to slide on down into Southern California during the day on Monday. And when that happens, we'll see more rain come into the area. Another cool night, but temperatures not quite as cold as last night from 28 at Lancaster to 50 at Redondo Beach. The clouds will keep us a little bit warmer this evening. 39 like Elsinore, 20 Big Bear tonight. Overnight uh, highs tomorrow will be in the 60s for the most part. Ontario at about 69 degrees. We'll have some sun in and out tomorrow, but a lot of clouds around too as we step back so you can see what's going on there. Rolling Hills at about 65 degrees. So kind of a cool day. Lots of clouds around, but I don't think we'll see any rain until late tomorrow night, maybe after midnight, and the rain that does fall into Sunday morning will be light, a quarter of an inch of rain at best. But then on Monday, the old jet stream kind of slides down into our area, cooler with some snow into Tuesday, and this weather system is the one that could be bringing us the possibility of one to two inches of rain uh, on into the middle part of the week. So, and surfers, wow. A big surf developing because that jet stream has generated some big storms out in the Pacific. So a westerly swell 
building right onto the weekend into Monday where we could see some 10, 15 foot. Ooh, so, sir. Wow, big. big one. All Thank right. you, Dallas. In the spirit of giving, it's that time of year when you can make sure every child has a happy holiday. It's ABC 7's 10th annual Spark of Love Toy Drive, and all you have to do is take any new unwrapped toy or piece of sports equipment to your local fire station or save on drugstore. They are jumping for joy after an amazing high flying formation. Just how many skydivers does it take to set a world record? We'll tell you. And in sports, Tiger has a bad paw. Details next. We gave you the number. You broke the story. The Eyewitness News tip line. Putting the power of Eyewitness News in your hands. When a bank standoff was unfolding, Eyewitness News put you first on the scene thanks to a tip to the Eyewitness News tip line. So when you see breaking news, dial up the power of Eyewitness News. Call 877-777-NEWS, toll free anywhere in the Southland. The Eyewitness News tip line. Another reason why ABC7 Eyewitness News is your number one source for live breaking news. Robinson's May. Football's fabulous twins on Monday Night Live after the game. You're looking at a new world's record in the making. Never before have 300 skydivers linked up in formation. The old record was 282, and they came to Arizona from more than 20 countries. The judges used cameras to prove that all 300 were holding hands at once to qualify for that record. The event continues through the weekend, and they will try to break their own record. Wow, mm. look at that. Oh. Rob Fugazaki joining us now with sports, and the Lakers are playing tonight at Staples Center. That's right, Michelle and David. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Life isn't getting any easier for the struggling L.A. Lakers. Not only has Lake Show only won 9 of 23 games, but the next 7 are against teams that made the playoffs last year. The Lakers' tough trek begins tonight at Staples against the Hornets, and that's where we find our John Hartung, who hopefully is providing the positive mojo, John. I'll be trying out here, Rob, that's for sure, but it's no secret. Victories for the Jackson 5 this season have not been as easy as 1-2-3. In fact, the Lakers are still searching for their first three-game winning streak of the season. And as amazing as it sounds, head coach Phil Jackson says his guys, the three-time champions, need to learn how to win. Unfortunately for us, we put ourselves in that position, you know, five or six times this year, and we've come up short. And it's the difference between a semi-successful year or, you know, we'd be on a pretty good roll and, and being in behind the eight ball. And so I think that edginess of not winning the close one says something about the chemistry. It is more mental than anything. Uh, the, the ability to believe in yourself as a group and knowing that uh, a loss is only a learning experience and to go from there and to string together some wins then develops the, you know, that... Uh, you know, that flow of uh, and belief that it can go beyond just one or two wins. It can turn into a streak of 10 or 12. And we've had those over the last three years, stretches where we get it going and, it, and uh, we catch a rhythm. And right now, uh, uh, we're still searching to, to create that. And it's not going to be easy against the team from the Big Easy. The Hornets come into tonight's game with the second best record in the Eastern Conference. You throw in the fact that it's Friday the 13th. The Lakers just hope that this uh, horror film of a season does not continue tonight. They'll hope for some good luck on this Friday the 13th. We're live at Staples Center. John Hart's on ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks very much there, John. The Clippers are in San Antonio tonight, and they got some good news before tipping off with the Spurs. The Clips activated center Michael Oluwakandi. He missed the past five games with a sore left knee. Highlights of the Clips and the Lakers at 11 o'clock. Football now, and... Could Mike Riley be UCLA's next head coach? It's a possibility. Riley turned down a multi-year offer from his alma mater, Alabama, today. The Crimson Tide wanted a decision now, and Riley still plans to meet the folks in Westwood early next week. The Saints assistant is busy right now getting ready for New Orleans and Minnesota this Sunday. And speaking of Minnesota, three players from the Vikings and three from the Packers were fined a total of $40,000 for this skirmish. After last Sunday's game, the Vikings were upset over several hard hits on the game's final play and sought retaliation for the six players say they will appeal. Tiger Woods says he will miss the season-opening 
Mercedes Championships. Tiger had successful arthroscopic surgery on his left knee in a clinic in Utah today. Wood says the knee has been bothering him all season. It's going to be the first time an injury has forced Tiger to skip a tournament. Finally, UCLA and Maryland in the men's NCAA Final Four soccer semifinal with just over eight minutes to play. Will Palmer takes down Cliff McKinley to set up a penalty kick, and that led to Adolfo Gregorio's game winner. Goal! And UCLA wins 2-1. to one. They'll play either Creighton or Stanford Sunday for the national title. And that'll do it in sports. All the highlights of the Lakers and Clippers coming up at 11 o'clock. And we just saw the uh, Clipper game. There are bats that flew onto the court, so that's going to be interesting. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you, okay. Rob. Right now, let's go to ABC's Peter Jennings for a look at what's coming up next on World News Tonight. Hello, Michelle and David. We're going to be talking on the broadcast tonight with George Stephanopoulos from Washington about the controversy which is swirling around Senator Lott at the moment. It's become very much about politics as well, of course, as race. That's on World News Tonight right after you. Thank you, Peter. The next time you visit an ATM, be careful how you act. Amazing new technology that can read your emotions. We'll tell you why these machines may know how you're feeling and why they care. Perfumes from European designers. Next up, sweaters in the finest cashmere in many styles. Lastly, the Italian leather bag made of the softest leather. Extraordinary craftsmanship. Okay, that's my gift list. It's all at Marshall's at incredible savings. Any questions? Dad, your turn. Thanks, honey. Great presentation. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Marshall's, okay. great selection, great gifts, great prices. What's for dinner? Spaghetti and meatballs for me, meatloaf for dad. Gina's having mac and cheese, and you're having lemon mashed potatoes. You don't have time for this. We do. At Hometown Buffet, we spend all day preparing your family's favorite dishes, so you don't have to. It's how everyone gets the dinner they want, and you get the time you need. Hometown Buffet, great choice. <laughs> wow. Wow is right. With Dish Network, you'll get America's lowest all digital price package. Over 50 channels for just $22.99. Wow. Visit Radio Shack Sears or a participating local retailer or call 1 800 333 Dish for our free dish offer. Do you have rollover minutes? Well, if you don't have singular wireless, you don't have rollover. Only singular lets you roll over your unused anytime minutes from month to month. So get rollover, singular, rollover, and start rolling over minutes over and over and over from month to month to month. To your minutes, keep them. Right now, get a thousand anytime minutes that can roll over. And take and send pictures with this cool camera phone. Hurry in, offer ends December 31st. Closed captioning for Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock right here on ABC7 is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The city of San Clemente is waging a battle with the owner of a surfboard business over a religious and patriotic symbol on his roof. The owner, Richard Landingham, erected a 10-foot cross with American flags. City officials cited Landingham for a misdemeanor, claiming he violated a local ban on rooftop signs. A jury deadlocked on the case, and the landing and Landingham is refusing to take the cross down while the city decides whether to try him again. Coming up tonight at 11 o'clock, we're on storm watch as not one but two storms bear down on the Southland. Will it be a repeat of that disaster a couple of years ago when coastal towns were flooded? We'll have the latest. And another fast food giant faces legal action over a cup of coffee. Plus, your Hollywood movie guide. These stories and much more coming up right after 2020 tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 o'clock. And finally, a fascinating one here. It's technology that many say is going a bit too far. ATMs that can read your emotions. The new machines capture an image of your face and then match it with the database of emotions. Based on how you're feeling, the ATM will then show you advertisements tailored to your state of mind. A lot of people find that creepy. A lot of folks don't like to feel like they're being watched. It's, it's not so much a privacy issue as it is a dignity issue or just a comfort level issue. The ATM can also tell if you're squinting. If so, it'll use a larger font. The company that designs the new ATMs plans to perfect the software. During